across the fence the tough economics of Vermont dairy farming. We'll learn what's happening and why. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Vermont dairy farmers are receiving the lowest milk prices in more than a decade. Simply put, there's an oversupply of milk and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. The low prices are affecting all aspects of dairy farming, organic and conventional. Across the Fence attended the annual Vermont Organic Dairy Producers Conference to learn more about the economic challenges. Here's Keith Silva with our story. It's a challenge that we haven't had since 2004. Vermont dairy farmers are facing a crisis in 2018. Low pay prices. The pay price is what the farmer receives for each 100 pounds of milk their cows produce. The pay price for conventional and organic milk is down by about 15% in 2018, as compared to the previous few years, according to the University of Vermont Extension. The drop in price is primarily due to an oversupply. Pembroke Heritage Farm in Randolph Center is a certified organic dairy run by Tony and Christine Brown. The Browns are able to weather the current crisis a bit better than others because their farm is paid for. And yet, Christine Brown doesn't want her business losing money. Slide, the last two years, the price has been dropping. And this year, I project it's going to be worse, and for about 25% of our income will be lost. So it, for us, because we're debt-free, is better because we have more room for flexibility, whereas a lot of farmers have tremendous infrastructure costs that have been financed and um, they don't have that wiggle room that we have. And so it's very challenging for those farmers right now and I'm concerned about the industry in general because of that. Brown was one of several presenters at a panel on financial basics at the 2018 Vermont Organic Dairy Producers Conference organized by UVM Extension. A packed agenda again this year. On average, organic dairy farmers receive twice the pay price of conventional farmers. In the first quarter of 2018, the average conventional pay price was about $15 per hundredweight, while the average organic pay price was about $30. That's according to the Vermont Agency of Agriculture. The higher organic pay price is due to increased costs to produce organic milk. In addition, organic milk companies like Organic Valley Co-op, which has 119 farms in Vermont, including the Browns, uses a quota system to try to control supply. Besides the low pay price, there are other factors affecting all Vermont dairy farms in 2018. There's a lot of pressure on farms. There's water regulations from the state that are costly infrastructure um, improvements. There's animal welfare for organic um, requirements that are more and more pressures for housing concerns and what your barn looks like. So for many farmers that may mean costly infrastructures that need to be adapted or built to meet demands. If you have a very small margin to begin with, like many farmers do, it leaves very little leeway. So you add that on top of the price cut, it obviously affects, you know, farmer morale and everything else. It's almost like a perfect storm at this point. So an example might be a fruit account table. Another speaker on the Financial Basics panel was Andy Wood, a loan officer with the Vermont Agricultural Credit Corporation's loan program. It's the lending arm of the state of Vermont's economic development and finance lender. Certainly milk prices are down, both organic and um, conventional, and that's going to lead uh, to some challenges and uh, you know, looking at the best way um, to manage through it. Um, both industries, however, are very strong for the state of Vermont. We have a, a large um, number of dairy farms and a large number of pro processing co-ops, and they're, um, it's going to be an industry that will be strong long term, but certainly will be some challenges this year. Wood stressed having a business plan and up-to-date record keeping in his presentation. You have to have a business plan, you have to think about why you're doing things, but for most of us at the end of the day there's some amount of money that that business needs to generate um, to, to have the livelihood that people need. So there has to be a relationship between the decisions you make and the finances. 
I like to see current. So I like to see, um, you know, that you're able to generate an income statement that's within 30 days, um, that you have an annual balance sheet, and that you have a general sense of where your balance sheet is at any point in time. I can't tell you yet if it's a good year or a bad year. It's just we need to get ready to operate with these lower milk prices. Jordy Lind milked 75 cows on his farm in South Walden. He's diversified his business with a sugaring operation and a breeding sow business. Andy Wood's advice about up-to-date record keeping was a reminder to Lind about his current financial situation. I do think now it would pay us to become better at managing the budgeting and record keeping. We've been thinking for a while, boy, we could get a lot better and sharper with the numbers and I, seeing them today gave us more reason to want to try. If there's a silver lining to this cloud of financial gloom that settled over Vermont's dairy farms in 2018, it may be as simple as this. It does pay to be hopeful. You don't do this business if you're not optimistic. We've been lucky. We got started right after the 08-09 dairy crisis. We had several years of good prices to build up and get on our feet as a business. It was steady. And we're taking our first real licking. So we're a, we're a, uh, we're new at this. I don't blame more experienced operators if they're a little more sick of the beating, but we're, we're, we're in our first, our first real tough price period, and we're hope, hoping it's not too long or too low, but we're, we're optimistic for lack of any better idea. Back at Pembroke Heritage Farm, Brown leans on her experience as a dairy farmer for the support she needs to ride out this current crisis. It's going to take a while for the situation to stabilize, but the reality is in the dairy world there's always been up and down cycles and to expect it not to affect organic in some ways is rather naive, I think. And um, so you need to kind of always be prepared in some aspect for that volatility. And um, for us, in the next year, we'll probably um, reassess some costs and find things that you could, you know, perhaps do a better job with. But record keeping is the perfect place to start because you've got to know where you're at to begin with. No matter if a farmer operates a conventional or organic dairy, 2018 is shaping up to be a challenging year. Perhaps 2019 will be better. Vermont dairy farmers can only hope. In Randolph Center, I'm Keith Silva for the Cross the Fence. I'm joined now by Bob Wellington. Bob is a longtime dairy economist who's now the Senior Vice President of Economics, Communications and Legislative Affairs for Agrimark. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Judy. So what's your take on the current financial situation on Vermont dairy farms? Well, it's, it's a very difficult situation for farmers. Um, they're, they're receiving prices that are below their cost of producing the milk, but it's not just uh, the current price that's the problem. Um, there's been pr low prices for over three years now, and, and for 2018, there may be a small level of improvement, but not very much. Uh, so it's puts tremendous pressure uh, on their earnings and uh, on their uh, covering their costs. And so what are you telling the members of your co-op and other farmers about what's happening and why? Well, um, it, it, a lot of it has to do with the marketplace, but the marketplace has changed dramatically, uh, particularly in the last 10 to 15 years. We're now selling a lot of uh, U.S. product overseas, and so those prices could really impact farm prices. It's not about the basic commodities like butter and cheese that it's been. Um, those products have companion products. Uh, with every pound of cheese that you make, you have 10 pounds of whey that you have to dry and sell. With every pound of butter that you make, you have two and a half pounds of non-fat dry milk that has to be sold. And it's those prices, the whey and the powder, that have collapsed because they're sold internationally. They're just incredibly low right now, and they're depressing the entire price that farmers receive. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to believe that what happens overseas in other countries is, is what's affecting us right here. It, it, it is. Um, we struggle. 20, 25 years ago with national prices that were affecting those in Vermont and New England. Um, and so we had to deal with that situation. Now as it stretches internationally, the solutions are much more difficult. And so what's the cost of production for conventional dairy operations? And given the low prices um, they're receiving, are they losing a lot of money? 
Um, they are losing a lot of money. It depends on the situation involved. Um, conventional dairy right now, um, the farmers that I talk to um, and Farm Credit and others that I talk with are $20 or more per hundred weight. And sometimes for some farmers, it can be several dollars above that amount. There are some farms that said they could do it for as low as $18. The problem right now is that the farm price is, is more like $15. And um, we don't see much recovery of more than maybe a dollar or two. So even for the low cost producers, it's going to be a struggle. And this is going to be a long-term situation. Well, we, we, have to, we have to look at that because typically that there's a cycle on prices. And usually it's been a three-year cycle. So um, there, there were uh, pretty good prices in 2011. Then they fell in 12 and 13. But then they bounced back up in 2014. Mm -hmm. And so we expected much higher prices last year because that would be the end of the three-year cycle. The prices improved, but not even to the level of cost of production. A lot of that has to do with international markets. So if international markets get stronger, then that could affect our price as well. So is the current economic situation kind of a new normal then for dairy producers? It, it, I, I hate to think that was the case, particularly when you have uh, prices that are below the cost for most farmers. Uh, I think there's going to be a rebounding on that because there is a, a contraction in some areas on milk production. Vermont milk production is now down so far in 2018, as well as New York. Um, and some areas of the country also, out in the upper Midwest, Wisconsin. Um, is, is down in milk production just slightly, but they're down. Unfortunately, Western producers are growing. And so at the end of the, at the, end of the day, U.S. milk production is still up. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to have to look at the situation, but no farm, no matter where they're located, can continue to farm and make milk if they can't cover their costs. Is what's happening with conventional markets connected to what's happening with lower pay price for organic producers as well? Um, I don't think it's directly connected, but it's the same economic forces that are involved. It's supply and demand. Um, there's been growing demand for, for organic products. Um, but because of that, because of the higher prices that farmers get, you see some farmers switching over into organic. And then you see other farmers who you might not think of as traditional organic farmers, farmers maybe milking a thousand or more cows that have switched to organic out west. And so they suddenly have more milk production. Um, and there's an old rule in, in dairy economics that a 2% imbalance in supply and demand drives prices 20% either way. It's the same in organic. That's crazy. So what do you say to consumers who see prices for milk and, and other products in the supermarket going up and then they hear that farmers are getting paid less so they're thinking well where's all the money going well and that depends on the, the policies of the retailer where you're buying your product um, uh, for, for example um, you know their costs are going up there may be not as much competition in in a state like Burlington where there's um, less density of population there's not as many large supermarket stores I look down in the, the southern New Hampshire Boston market that I'm very familiar with and within five minutes ride you can go to four large supermarkets and you can buy milk for two dollars and fifty cents a gallon I mean because of that level of competition and and the number of consumers involved so sometimes it gets passed along sometimes it doesn't sometimes other issues are involved for example when you when you're buying cheese um, you know I work for the dairy farmers who own cabbage cheese we naturally age our cheese so when you go and buy our cheese you're buying cheese in many cases like a seriously sharp that's been aged for up to 12 months sometimes longer mm -hmm. and the milk prices were a little better maybe 10 15 cents a pound for cheese so you know a year ago so you don't know what's where the what the cost of the milk was when the cheese was made the cost of aging it there's a lot of different factors so it's really hard to read late that price in the retail store back to farms. So when do you think uh, farmers might see prices stabilize? Well, we're seeing that all the forecasts that I've seen show uh, market prices for, for farm milk has probably reached its low point for February milk production on the price that farmers are receiving right now. Um, but um, the recovery is going to be slow. And we might see another dollar or two dollars a hundredweight by the time we get to this fall. 
Um, it's going to come, like I said, come slow. It's not going to be enough. Um, but there be, will be some level of recovery. Uh, I think there's going to be an opportunity under the government uh, margin protection program that Senator Leahy was key in getting some, some changes to it. I believe that's going to pay money back to farmers um, and help them out. It's not going to be huge amounts of money, but it's going to help dent some of the issues that they're facing. Bob, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.